We have Tim in Ohio, pronouns are he, him, uh, with something, a, a claim that I, I'm really intrigued by uh, about consciousness. So welcome, Tim. What do you got for us? Hi, Matt. I just want to say I'm a huge fan. I really loved your conversation with Jordan Peterson. Um, so the first, I want to start off by defining consciousness as uh, just blanket awareness, right? Um, so... Uh, so the reason why I, I can believe that consciousness can transcend time and space is due to things like uh, the the subjectivity of perception and how that can play into how the passage of time can seem to go faster or slower based on what you're experiencing um, and how out-of-body out of experiences during trauma can happen. Like, for example, if you're in a car accident and you, you, uh, a lot of people who survive the experience report things like seeing themselves from the third person. Um, so I, I, I basically just kind of want to, uh, like use that and say like the mystery of consciousness is such that there's reason to believe that while we use it to, to our advantage in our experience, it can also be present outside of our experience. Didn't okay. hear anything that sounded like proof. I will deal, I'll deal with the OBE stuff very quickly. The best you can say about any out-of-body experience, including those that have been rec uh, meticulous recorded, is that we have no idea what the hell happened. That is the best you can say. It's not proof of anything, right? And if you're going to make a proof of anything, then you got to do something more than that. Every single uh, paper I've read on OBE uh, doesn't give any explanation for what is actually going on. It is simply reporting what other people are reporting. Uh, there's no attempt to do anything else beyond that, no attempt to prove anything. So I don't care what OBE says until someone actually does some sort of experiment to actually prove that there's something else going on. In fact, uh, in some operating rooms, they write stuff on the tops of shelves and people don't know what was written on top of the shelf to f despite their knowing what's going on on the uh, third part or you know, from the, the third person point of view. So yeah, we just don't really know what's going on. The fact that everything, you know, some things seem to be subjective, I have no idea what that even means in terms of proving anything other than some things uh, appear to be subjective. So where's your evidence? Um, okay, so I guess I have a question in response to how you responded, which would be like, how would you go about demonstrating that if not just by not using deductive problem. reasoning? Not my problem. But I'm not making the claim. The you are. No, he's yeah, asking, asking you to defend your case. And what you came in with was you think consciousness can transcend space and time because sometimes our subjective experience of time doesn't seem to track with, oh, that took way longer than I thought or way, or way less time than I thought. The problem is, is that an objective external observer measuring that time for that subjective experiencer would show that the time passed at exactly the same rate and consistency that it always does. Your perception of reality is not in and of itself confirmation of that. And the same thing is true with out-of-body experiences or people who seem to experience some sort of, um, uh, you know, oh, I, I can see myself from the outside. The fact that your brain creates this impression doesn't mean that it actually happened. And so in order to show that consciousness, see, and this is why I said I was curious about it. I don't know how you could demonstrate that anything transcends time and space. I don't know what it means to transcend time and space because without time, there is no action, there is no existence. It means nothing to say that something exists for zero seconds. And without space, there is no matter and there is no um, abstractions that arise from that matter. So if all you've got that makes you think that consciousness mm -hmm. can surpass time I, and space I, I, is subjective experience I, while I'm still fucking you. talking. You know, go ahead, Tim. It was more important for you to say without listening to my thought uh, than it was for me to finish it. So please finish your thought, Tim. And I mean, finish it. Okay. So what I was saying was astrophysicists and theoretical physicists would both disagree with you. One of those physicists, his name is Donald Hoffman. You can find him on the internet. He himself has done years Have of him studies call. on the subject. Have him call. Goodbye.
Here's yeah, a pro cite tip. the source, not the physicist. Cite, cite the research, not the physicist. Yeah. Uh, I, not only should you bring your A game, but if your A game consists of there are astrophysicists and physicists who would agree with you if you go study this person's stuff and read, I don't want it. If that person wants to debate me or make the case or show up with evidence, they can do that. You need to show up with evidence on your own. You don't just run around, say, oh, this is what so-and-so said. Okay, congratulations. Um, if you're convinced that that uh, consciousness can can uh, is not necessarily bound by space and time, maybe you should have started with the scientific research instead of saying, hey, we have this subjective experience of time. Sometimes it just seems to drag because, right. boy, was that call dragging. Yeah, and that's part of the problem, too, is that people don't understand the uh, appeal to authority fallacy. Um, a physicist has a lot of experience, and if they are, and, and a lot, and they've done a lot of research in many cases, so not all of them, but, and, but those that have, have a bedrock of, of that research to stand upon when they say something. But they can also state their opinion. And if that's all they're doing, if, if what they say is not based directly on their research, then there's they you are appealing to their authority as as an expert in the field and that doesn't always work if they're expressing their opinion so if in some physicist or astrophysicist opinion it is possible to know that something or that things exist outside time and space that's one thing it's another thing to prove it yeah. and so that's why i said cite your uh cite the research not the person yeah. right because the research is what matters the tests are what matter, not someone's opinion of that, even if it's drawn on 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years of research in physicists and in, in physics, astrophysics or any other subject. It doesn't matter. What matters is what does the research show? And yes, it is interesting that some people think that things exist outside of our time and space, multiple universes, all the rest of that, but nobody has proven it. And that's the problem. Some people have proven it through math, but there's a problem with that. Math isn't the same as reality. And just because we do something in math doesn't mean in reality it's actually possible because we may not understand the model well enough for the math to work correctly. And that's all math is, is a model. And if we don't understand the physics, we don't understand the astrophysics well enough, then our models will be incorrect. That's all that's gonna happen. So yeah, cite, cite the evidence not the researcher, doesn't matter who it is. Um, it's the evidence that matters. It's it's really, I mean, bring in whatever. Uh, but if you start with, I think it transcends space and time because sometimes it feels like time really drags instead of, I think it's, it's uh, it transcends space and time because there's scientific evidence that shows that this model here uh, might allow for that. Um, you fucked up. 